Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Oklahoma Adventure Forum podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Golding. I'm here today with Kathy and Randy from Sea Light. And what Sea Light is is a sterile, hands free LED light. That's going to be a, a very interesting conversation today about how this came about, what the product is, where the company's at today. And they are one of our pitch presenters for the next OVF meeting. We're going to have five pitch presenters. This is one of them. This is Sea Light. So quickly, Randy and Kathy, introduce yourselves and tell us more about Sea Light. Thank you, Kyle. I'm Randy Wall. I'm president of Sea Light LLC. I have over 30 years experience in the healthcare uh, field, mainly at the executive level, and I've been with some major corporations, Bristol Myers Squibb mm-hmm. and 3M, and several others. Fortunately, I was able to be involved in companies that developed very innovative products that actually changed markets, and that doesn't happen very often. Right. We believe Sea Light, the product, will be able to transform markets that we know today. Let me give you two examples. I served as CEO of SEMA Labs, and at SEMA Labs, we developed the first oral dissolvable tablet. Now there are hundreds on the market, (laughs) but we were the first ones. Being first is always good. Being first is always good. And what was the example I always used was take the tablet, bubblegum flavored, full of medication at the right level, give it to your child instead of spilling stuff. (laughs) uh, Five seconds later, your child's totally medicated. And it, it grew from there into uh, cancer drugs where you couldn't swallow. Okay. And the technology was so good, I um, took the company through an IPO. Okay. Probably the most interesting experience I have ever had. Most people don't get to go IPO. M- most people don't. And it, it, it's hard, but it, mm-hmm. it, it is fun. Prior to joining SEMA Labs, I was president of Unitech Corporation, the largest orthodontic company in the United States and a division of Bristol-Myers Squibb. And there we invented the first clear ceramic bracket that revolutionized the orthodontic market. And we believe, again, that Sea Light is going to transform the market, maybe like these two products did. Very good. Kathy? Hi, uh, I'm Kathy Boyer. I'm a the Chief Operating Officer of Sea Light LLC, and uh, I graduated from Oklahoma State University Spear Schools of Business. Okay. Um, I spent the better part of the last uh, decade in the oil and gas industry as a uh, project manager. The common theme this year for OVF is we have a lot of people coming from oil and gas and getting into other spaces, but taking that institutional knowledge they have uh, to, to create new startups. Yeah, it's, it's actually very phenomenal. Um, I was hired in a support role. And then my position really evolved uh, mm-hmm. to include the planning, execution, and customer service of uh, roughly $30 million in acquisitions and sales contracts. Um, we came from Stillwater, uh, Oklahoma today, uh, and we are very excited to talk to you and your audience about our transformational product. Okay, so let's talk about product specifically. What is the Sea Light? So I explained earlier, sterile hands-free LED light. There's also, it's a 360-degree swivel, et cetera. So Who's it for? Who's using it? And what problem does it solve? The Sea Light is a compact medical grade light. It's about the size of a half dollar here. And it has a, a socket on the back side of it to where you can click into an EKG pad. And that right. is what gives it the 360 degree swivel. Okay. So the pad can go on the patient or it can go anywhere um, in the in the space. And then you swivel uh, to target the illumination where it's needed. And the EKG pads are used... By, by medical staff all the time, right? It's very common for them. Very, very common, yes. Is light comes sterile and standardized for dependable and reliable lighting. And when I say standardized, I'm talking about the bulb specifications. Um, we're following the international um, standard for an operating room medical examination light. So the other lights with this standard are going to be traditionally bolted to the beds or they're going to be uh, mounted on the cart dolly. Okay. Um, Not exactly where the light needs to be in order for the medical professional to do their job as best as they can, right? Well, right. It works in the operating room. Okay. Because that's what, you know, but it, this um, takes that operating room level lighting and it really puts it into the pocket of the provider. Um, it comes in a sterile pouch and uh, just one more thing that they can, they can carry along with them and, and have whenever they need it. 
So more tools for doctors, nurses to do their job better is always a good idea. Exactly. Where did the idea for this come about? What was the, the problem being solved by having this additional option of light? Well, first, let me talk to you about where the idea came from. Okay. And Tanya Vaughn is the inventor. Mm -hmm. She's the third person in the company and not here today. She's an RN and has been an RN for over 30 years practicing in healthcare and also teaching. And along those 30 years, she became very frustrated because a lot of procedures, simple procedures that she w tried to do didn't have adequate lighting. And if you don't have li adequate lighting, you have a problem. Certainly. And she noodled it around for years and thought about this and thought about that. And then over time, she came up with a novel concept. And that novel concept over years of thinking about it is now the sea light. And the sea light has become, as Kathy just said, a product that the provider can put in their hands, medical grade lighting, and improve the quality of care for that procedure. Which would be a high ask and a high need for an RN or an LPN or anyone else who's working in those conditions where they have to move fast, they have to see a lot of patients, and they don't know exactly what it is they're dealing with until they get in there and they get as much information as they can from the patient. Yes, and when we say what problem did it solve, uh, we know poor lighting, as you're just referring mm -hmm. to, is a hazard. Right. There's no question about that. In fact, hundreds of thousands of, of dollars are spent every year researching and tr trying to develop new methods to improve lighting in the hospital. We, knew, we know the operating room and the emergency room have very strict standards on lighting. Mm -hmm. But there's absolutely no standard on lighting outside of those rooms to speak of. There is absolutely no standard of lighting for handheld devices that are used throughout uh, the hospital. Okay. And as Kathy said, we can now take medical-grade lighting, put it in the provider, physician, nurses, in their pocket or in their hands, and they'll have medical-grade lighting anytime, anywhere. And, and that's going to be huge in the market because it is not there today. So with the application of the EKG pad, it can stick it literally right, right on the patient and put the light exactly where they need it to be in order to, to uh, understand what the problem is or, to, or even to, to do their work, right? To, well, to, apply, that, to apply sutures or anything else they're doing? That's exactly right. That's right. exactly right. Um, the, uh, the light can, it is sterile. So, um, it sticks right on there. Yeah. It does. <laughs> it's sterile and it can be used in the sterile field and keep everything sterile. Right. Um, if you don't need that much intensity with it, then you can, um, attach it to really any, anywhere around your patient where you need to see the light. You know, right. unfortunately, some of the, the problems that people have happen in very inconvenient places. <laughs> Certainly. Well, head to toe, right? right? When you, it could be right. anywhere, anywhere on your body. Right. So um, this, uh, the sea light is really, it's a, it's a class of light to itself. Um, the, the current competition that we have, um, we see, is, uh, is the pen light. Um, okay. Which is the pen light is, uh, it was invented in 1900. It's, at this point, um, it's considered cheap and susceptible to breakage. And then also the, the, the bulb doesn't have any specification. You might right. have a yellow bulb, you might have a white bulb, you might have a blue bulb, who knows what it is. And um, with sea light, uh, you have a color rendered light. It's made to uh, help you detect changes in skin tone. So the light is not just designed to be convenient, but it is con designed for the medical use facility and exactly what, what you're applying it to for our physicians, nurses, et cetera, all the way down to the color of the, of the light itself. Yes, absolutely. The, the color of the light and the heat temperature mm -hmm. and um, the illumination. Now, a lot of people, when they talk about flashlights, they know lumens. Sure. So we're talking in lux. And what's the difference between a lumen and lux? And a lumen is what emits from the flashlight. And lux is what arrives at your destination where you're trying to see. All right. Where, where it's really important. Where you need it as is much, really important. As much light there as possible. That's right? exactly right. Our light will target the illumination 
and is ideally placed within six inches of, of where you're trying to stick. Okay, so you stick it right on. You get light where you need to work, and you're hands-free now to be able to, to do that work. A- okay. And because it's the EKG pad, it's something that not going to irritate the skin and it's already something that that's being used all over a patient's body anyways right well right and then because it's sterile you know if you're doing something and you need to just twist it a little bit you're not going to be breaking your sterile field um by by touching it um there's a lot of especially in the catheterization market you know you're very hypersensitive to uh to the bacteria that can kind of encroach in your in your area um so that was a something that's very special about us and completely different from the pen light you know, the pen light gets carried in your nurse's pocket. It gets thrown in their purse. And then, you know, if they want to be hands-free, it gets put in their mouth. Or maybe even traded back and forth between physicians, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yes. And it's not hands-free. And right. it's not hands-free unless you put it in your mouth. Well, that's not very sterile either. <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> right. So we are, uh, we're superior for, without a doubt, and we're sterilized for safety. We want, uh, we want patients and providers um, to benefit from the use of our light and, and that's the uh, the bulb specifications is is designed for that. So I'm assuming this is this is a product that you're going to sell directly to hospitals and other medical facilities. Uh, not ne- not necessarily. We have to look at that develop uh, because most supplies are coming through GPOs, group purchasing organizations. Okay, is that our target? We have to look. We're we're including that to analyze that. We could sell direct uh, uh, to to the hospitals themselves. We just have to feel that out as we enter the market. Gotcha. That makes a lot of sense. But it is. Our purpose is for the administration to provide their their employees with the with the adequate lighting that these procedures call for. Did you just develop the design or have you, are you part of manufacturing? How how are you getting um, who are you working with and how are you getting it from that idea and and even a sketch and even a drawing? To this physical item, which you have here, uh, and and eventually going to get that into distribution. Well, um, we have finalized a contract with uh, a a turnkey contract with Capstone Medical, and they okay. will help us develop our supply chain. They're going to help us prepare for an FDA compliant U.S. launch. Um, with them, we've improved our prototype. You know, our original is right here, um, and uh, with our new light, um, we have the the brighter LED. Uh, you can't really tell right here. Well, there. Actually, can I can tell the difference. Yeah, yeah, it is very bright. Yeah, right in there. That's right. that was the first one, and this is the second one. And then we've added a dimmer, so you have Dang, it at half options. at half yeah. light. Yep. Yeah. And uh, we will also have a lanyard loop um, right. added in there to where uh, if your nurse provider has uh, has their badge or something, mm-hmm. and they want to do night checks, then they can can slide it on there and they they can you know move about the cabin so these sounds speak. like these sound like options that have come from the r d process of actually going out to to our medical professionals and asking what they want and need right no question no okay. question we've shown it to a lot of different providers um it ha- hasn't been used because we weren't ready for that mm-hmm. and uh, they gave us good feedback and it was perfect timing because as kathy said uh, now we go into manufacturing, right. and we think we've solved all the problem that we see right now. So the approval, the, the the approval for medical devices can sometimes be very long and complicated. Have you started that process? Where are you in that? And what do you think the anticipated timeline is going to be for that? My whole world has been uh, uh, pharmaceuticals and medical devices, right. so uh, you know, NDAs and five ten Ks and that. We're fortunate because what you just said is true on a lot of products, but it's not true on some products, and we're classified as a 510K exempt. We've had consultants confirm all this, okay. and the re- we have to, um, uh, we have to uh, register with the FDA. Mm-hmm. We have to provide certain data. Uh, we have to have sterilization records uh, because it is sterile. We have to have recall capability. All of that's going to be performed by Capstone. They do it now, so it's a total package. And the approval to register um, a non-exempt 510K could be three three months just using an average. It's it's short. So it's a very short period of time. Very yes. short period of time, yeah. Okay. And, so, and you're working with a partner who has established track record of doing that as well, and they'll be helping you on the manufacturing side as well. So you, you have yeah. your partners lined up. You have, you have your 
strategy as to how you're getting this to market. What's the next step? What are you going to do? And how does your pitch at OVF fit into those future plans? Well, let's first talk about um, it's ready to go. Okay. And uh, what are our marketing plans? And I think we're trying to make this simple because of the value of the product. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a three-pronged approach. The first is try to get as many sea lights, whether we give it away or have them bought or we're not sure, Mm -hmm. into the hospitals. Get them in the provider's hands, physicians, nurses, and other people in our distribution chain so they can see the benefits. It's going to be pen light, this, it's an easy call. (laughs) Right. Um, The second is more traditional. We'll be doing advertising. Uh, brochures, and trade shows a- after we launch the product. And the third, I think, is very important. We're going to identify the infection control departments and the risk management departments and talk with them about the benefits of sea light, but more importantly, the cost savings. We believe we can, we can save the hospitals a sin- significant amount of money, and it it is, these numbers are unbelievable. They're all out of documents that are in the marketplace. Um, we have focused a lot of our numbers on the UTI market, um, urinary tract mm-hmm. infections, and pressure ulcers, because these are two significant holes, expense holes, uh, for the hospitals. The industry spends an average of $13,000 per, pa- per patient to fix a UTI. They spend $43,000 on average to fix a pressure u- ulcer. Um, and the, a huge point is they're not reimbursed by anyone oh. because it is considered a hospital-acquired infection. Ah. So you don't go to Medicare or Blue Cross and say, well, here's a CPT code, you know, uh, we want this amount of money. So they're going to be highly motivated to reduce these infections and fix it and get it right the first time, as opposed to having to absorb these costs. Yes. Uh, We think because of this, we can reduce the the variable costs associated with hospital-acquired infections. Just throwing a number out, uh, we have some formulas that looks at a hospital, looks at the state of Oklahoma and the mm-hmm. United States for just UTIs. And it's about, it could be a, about a $5 billion savings. Wow. And, and some people will say, well, that's a huge number. But we re- remember, our healthcare industry is $4.3 trillion. Right, right. So we can do our little part, but to an average uh, community hospital, which we project could probably be a million dollar savings, you know, something in that range. Right. It just depends on the adoption rate. That's a lot of money. Sure. And I think importantly, when we went into this, you can make these numbers in healthcare astronomically. Mm. We, we didn't feel that was realistic as we're presenting what we're able to do. We don't need 80, 90 percent adoption rate to generate a successful business. All of our formulas are based on research data that's in the market, but we're using 3 4 5% as our adoption r- rates, which we feel is low. But it, I think it's more realistic, and it will show a ramp that we're able to achieve over time. You've identified a, a problem that you could quantify if it was to be solved or at least reduced. You've identified a simple, elegant solution to do just that. You're working with partners to manufacture and to do distribution and to get your approval, et cetera. So you have, you have all of your, your dominoes set up. You're ready. Sounds like you're ready to go to market. You have a strategy, et cetera. So what's the next last piece? What's the thing that's going to launch Sea light into the, the stratosphere of successful business? First of all, let's talk funding. There you go. <laughs> Got to have a little rocket fuel if you're going to launch Every this. Now and exactly, that's right. That's exactly. We have self-funded the company uh, okay, to three hundred thousand dollars so far. All right. What has that uh, given us? It's given us an issued patent. It's right. given us a product that is made. Right. We know we can make it. 
Uh, these were all uh, manufactured. We had 4,000 of these manufactured to play with. Okay. We know that it solves a problem. We know that it can be scaled up because of cap discussion with right. Capstone, so into production. We know the regulatory background of it. And more importantly to me, we know the preliminary cost of goods sold that fit our parameters. So we're not saying, this is a great product, but you can't afford it. <laughs> because that doesn't do you any good. It doesn't do us any good. And our target funding is $1.25 million. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, you know, $5 is a lot when you're raising money. <laughs> but $1.25 million, which will equate to 31.1% equity in the company. Hey. Importantly, uh, I think to the investors, we're going to pay back the investors 150% of their investment prior to management taking any money out as a distribution. We think this is um, going to be very attractive, and we have some you know, numbers that we're not going to discuss here today. <laughs> don't need to yet. Yeah, no, don't I need think to more yet. than anything else, you have proven that you have thought every bit of this through, that, yes. that you have realistic expectations. You understand how business works. You've bought, brought a product to a market that is a very large, easy easy to understand market that it's not going away anytime soon. And it's, it's probably going to expand before it ever contracts. So you've kind of crossed your T's and dotted your I's on, a, on a, making this a very potential lucrative and attractive deal to any potential investor, or maybe even uh, users of the product, maybe someone who is already in the healthcare industry who wants to make that first order. Yes. Uh, you know, Foley catheters as, as an example, because um, females uh, receive a lot of Foley catheters. Well, there's privacy. So most of the time, the patient is draped. Mm. Well, as soon as you do that, you lose all of oh, this oh, kind oh, of lighting, right. and you're back to the pen light in your mouth where, of course, you can take this product, stick it on their inner thigh, and all of a sudden your field is like an operating room. So, uh, yes, it's a simple procedure. It's done thousands of times a day, but not under great conditions most of the time. And when you have multiple attempts, it's all written in in documents, and, and there are a lot of multiple attempts to insert a Foley catheter, you usually will generate an infection. And we that's one of the things. Yes, we have uh, a product. But one of our sub-products that we really think is going to help the industry is saving money. Certainly. Saving money and benefiting the patient. Absolutely. For avo- <laughs> avoiding those infections as well. Well, and not only that, but it's, uh, it's good for the provider. You know, mm. COVID really really told us how much the, the the healthcare system hurts, if you will. Sure. And I know that when you try to do something and you don't get it right, you get frustrated. Sure. And then if you don't get it right again, you get even more frustrated. Mm-hmm. And then the person that you're doing this on is like, are you okay? Is something wrong? Um, and then you start to really lose your confidence. And, and with that, um, a lot of, uh, a lot of things kind of fall out. So with, with the light and being able to help the provider um, with the lighting. And I, I, I really honestly feel that it's going to help inspire confidence that will um, kind of carry on. You know, you get it right the first time and, hey, you're in a good mood. Like, woohoo! An extended benefit to our medical professionals. For well, sure. that's exactly right. And, there's and a, patients. There's a lot of research out there that talks about um, how, how all that really affects the bottom line. Mm. You know, to err is, is human. Certainly. <laughs> But we, we, we depend on our professionals to, to get it right the first time when we they do. can. Right? Well, we, and we, ho- we think that we're giving them a product that will help, help them do just exactly that. And, you know, being in the industry my whole career, there are a lot of innovative products that you take into a hospital and say, hey, we, we can't afford that. That's mm. too much of a difference. Sure. But innovation always comes in. Here, what we are excited about is we can go to the provider and they're, they're going to see a tremendous difference. Mm-hmm. They don't care about the cost. Tremendous difference. Right. Then we're going to walk upstairs and say, not only are we giving you a better product for your providers, a better experience for the patients, but we're going to save you money. Right. And I think that's a good formula. If it was just the product and say, well, we're going to layer on mm-hmm. uh, a cost, that's a different sell than when you, and, and it's not us saying it, it's what's documented in thousands of articles in 
uh, that are in print today about cost savings. That's what we would all call a win-win. Yes. It's a win-win. Yeah. There you go. So this has been an interesting conversation. I, I, I know that you guys have so much more information to share that you'll be sharing with everyone on April 12th as part of our pitch day at OVF, one of five pitch presentations. Also joining Sea Light will be Pipe Dream Labs, Carrot Human Technology, Pero Nano, Otos Inc., and Myri Health. So we have a couple of different healthcare and some others that are in some different industries as well. But April 12th, you guys want to be in the room. You want to hear the pitch from Sea Light and the others. Meet these very smart, prepared people too. And maybe pitch them your own idea about how you want to work with them in the future. So I appreciate you guys coming on the OVF podcast and talking to me about Sea Light and can't wait to hear your pitch presentation in April 2023. Thank Great, you. Kyle. Thank you so much for your time. Sure thing.